There's a lot to see along Bangkok's Chow Praia River between Pra Artit Pier and Satorn Pier. Use this video guide and board a Chow Praia Express boat, some people call them river taxis, for a cheap, informative, self-guided excursion lasting about half an hour. Before boarding at Pra Artit Pier, wander upstream along the riverside path towards the Rama the Eighth Bridge, which was completed in 2002. The Rama the Eighth Memorial Park is located just before it on the opposite bank. King Rama the Eighth unfortunately passed away in 1946, aged just 20 years old. The path leads to Prasuman Fort. Situated in a small but popular park, it was built in 1782 at one end of a defensive system surrounding the historic city, which included a wall, the nearby canal, and 13 other forts. River taxis run at frequent intervals. Board one flying an orange triangular flag at the back, which is heading downstream away from the Rama, the Eighth Bridge. The journey starts with a short hop over to Pinklau Bridge Pier, by no means spectacular, but a convenient stopping-off place for anybody wishing to visit the Royal Barge Museum. Just after the bridge, the river taxi stays close to the right bank, where evening dinner cruise boats are usually moored until late afternoon. The cruises are popular with tourists, and several companies run them. Food tends to be varied and plentiful, while on-board entertainment consists mostly of traditional Thai dancing and cabaret singers. Ask for a table on the top deck. The route continues past the mouth of the Bangkok Noi Canal. If you decide to take a canal boat ride, the chances are you will get to see a lot more of it. The most popular and probably best option lasts for 90 minutes and includes a 20 or 30 minute stop at Taling Chan, a small floating market which, especially at weekends, is popular with Thais. Tonbury Railway Station Pier is actually more than a kilometer from the station. A few trains leave each day for Kanchanaburi and the River Kwai Bridge. Siriraj Hospital beside the pier is named after a son of King Rama V and is where King Rama IX departed this life on 13 October 2016. He was extremely popular with the Thai people. Across the river, the pointed tower, called the Dome, is a prominent feature of Tamasat University, the second oldest in Thailand. Then Pranik Pier serves Wang Lang Market, where the restaurants overlooking the pier are well patronized by Thais. Though not overly luxurious, they are comfortable enough with tasty Thai food, honest Thai prices, menus written in English, and river views. They are also a convenient place to relax after visiting the Grand Palace. Take an inexpensive cross-river ferry from Tar Chang Pier. A hundred or so meters further on, Wat Rakong is an important temple, easily reached and with nice views across the river to the Grand Palace. Schools like the one next to it are a feature of many temples throughout Thailand. The Cheng Pier is close to where the king used to keep his elephants. The Thai word for elephant is Cheng. It's the closest pier to the Grand Palace, which, even if you're not particularly interested in culture and history, is worth visiting just because about the only other building like it in the world is next door at Wat Pho. Cover legs and shoulders when you go, because Wat Prakayu, Thailand's most important temple, is within its grounds. As the journey continues past the Grand Palace, many of the buildings on either side of the river are associated with the Royal Thai Navy, as are the small vessels moored along its banks. The large pitched roof building immediately after the palace wall finishes houses the reclining Buddha, one of the main features of Wat Po. The tall stupa you probably first noticed a while back is Wat Arun. It is where the Thais retreated in 1767 after being defeated by the Burmese about 50 kilometers upriver at Ayutthaya, which until then had been their capital city. Fortunately, the Burmese army was unable to mount a pursuit because of unfinished business with the Chinese. Fortunately again, 
the unfinished business did not end well for the Burmese, and the ties were left in peace. Then, a few years later, in 1782, King Rama I decided to resettle on the other side of the river, close to where the Grand Palace is now, and that is how Bangkok became Thailand's capital city. Wat Arun is actually decorated with broken pieces of porcelain. In centuries gone by, empty Chinese ships arriving in Thailand used it as ballast. It was then dumped on the riverbank before cargo was loaded for the return journey. The ingenious Thais found a use for it. After Wat Arun, Wichai Prasit Fortress, situated within the Navy headquarters complex, is followed by a set of lock gates which leads into the canal system. Wat Kalayanamit, considered quite important but not often visited by tourists, lies just beyond the gates. It is the start point of a pleasant riverside walk down to the next bridge. Across the river, Rajani Pier, the next stop on the river taxi's route, is situated beside an entrance to the old city moat, built in 1782 to protect Thailand's new capital. It loops round to meet the river again beneath Pra Pinklau Bridge, making for quite a pleasant walk if you're that way inclined. Along the way, it passes the Flower Market before continuing to Sarenrum Park and Wat Racha Pradit, both associated with King Rama IV. Close by, Wat Ratchabopit has a royal mausoleum in its grounds. Beyond the Supreme Court building, the moat reaches Sanam Luang, the park in front of the Grand Palace, where it diverts beneath the approach road to Phra Pinklau Bridge. There's an entrance to Sanam Chai MRT station, only about 50 meters inland from Rajini Pier, which is, of course, convenient for anybody wishing to interchange between the two forms of transport. The footbridge across the canal there leads to Atsadang Pier, from where a ferry transports passengers over to Wat Kalayanamit. Downstream, about 200 meters past the Wat, Santa Cruz Church was originally built in the 1770s by Portuguese settlers who had relocated from Ayutthaya in 1767 after the Thais were defeated there. This, the third building on the site, was completed in 1916 it's possible to climb up inside the white stupa of Wat Prayun, and almost impossible not to hit your head on something at least once or twice while doing so. There is a pool in the grounds where some turtles live, and a lady selling the kind of food they like to people wishing to feed them. Ahead, the Memorial Bridge, industrial in appearance, was completed in 1932, to coincide with the 150th anniversary of the founding of Bangkok. Immediately after it, the Prapoklau Bridge has a sky park between its carriageways. The original intention was to build a rail bridge, but plans changed and the park filled the void. Once through the bridges, look right to see the small Kuatan Mosque, built in 1859. Then soon after, the Kuan Yu Chinese Shrine, which was established sometime before Bangkok became Thailand's capital. Opposite the mosque, over to the left-hand side of the boat, the entrance to the second defensive canal around the historic city is, like many other canals, protected by lock gates because Bangkok is low-lying and on a floodplain. The other end of it is beside Prasuman Fort, close to where this commentary began. Chinatown has no official boundaries, but this is where it starts, approximately. It is one of the oldest and biggest in the world. Originally, the Chinese lived where the Grand Palace is now, but agreed to move slightly downstream when asked by the Thais. Many buildings near the river here are warehouses, a throwback to the time when this was the main port area. The majority of Chinatown's more interesting features tend to be further inland. High-rise Bangkok River Park condominium topped by a dome seems slightly out of place. Having said that, though, if you want to buy one of the apartments there, you had better be rich. There is every chance that during this journey you will have seen small boats hauling a line of much larger barges along the river. They are a very common feature and still an effective way to transport bulk goods. 
Rachawong Pier serves Chinatown. Most tourists, though, will find that taking the train to Wat Mangkon MRT station is a better option as it's located more centrally. Over to the right, Chi Chin Kor Temple, which belongs to an organization dedicated to charitable acts, can be easily identified by the pagoda in its grounds. Beyond it, high-rise buildings begin to pierce the sky as the journey enters some of Bangkok's more modern districts. Over to the left, the boat passes a couple of Chinese shrines on its way to the Marine Department Pier, which serves Talat Noi, a genuine Thai neighborhood, with relatively few tourists and quite interesting to wander around for an hour or so. Immediately after the Marine Department Pier, the Siam Commercial Bank Building, the oldest working bank branch in Thailand, dates from 1908. European in style, it has an interior which still retains many early 20th century features. Then, the Holy Rosary Church, also architecturally European, was completed in 1897. As with Santa Cruz Church, which the boat passed earlier, the original structure was built by Portuguese settlers soon after the Thais were defeated by the Burmese at Ayutthaya. River City, one of the major arts and antiques centers in Southeast Asia, has a helipad on the roof and a sky bridge link to the nearby Royal Orchid Sheraton Hotel. Also upmarket, there is actually a reasonable selection of items for sale aimed at customers of more modest means. The riverside restaurants and bars there tend to be more lively during the evening. Immediately past Sipraya Pier, the Riverside Portuguese Embassy is the oldest diplomatic mission in Thailand. Not surprising given the Portuguese arrived in the country some 100 years before any other Europeans. As the boat crosses the river, the Millennium Hilton, another of the top-class hotels in this part of Bangkok, is located beside Icon Siam, a popular shopping complex attracting up to 60,000 foreign tourists each day with its very own river taxi pier. Multilingual staff at the information counters are on hand to advise on promotions, tourist cards, VAT rebate, and other specials. Icon Siam's own boats run all day and late into the evening, transporting customers to and from Sathorn Pier, where there is a convenient connection to Bangkok's train network and also where this commentary finishes. Back to the left bank again, the tall, glassy cat tower, headquarters of a state-owned telecommunications company, contrasts sharply with the old customs house beside it. Then the French embassy, more often than not flying its national flag from a tall mast, is quickly followed by the Mandarin Oriental Hotel, which is situated beside the aptly named Oriental Pier, and where Thailand's very first lift was installed. If no passengers are waiting, the boat will cruise slowly by the pier without stopping. Slightly inland, the Golden Domed State Tower is home to one of the world's highest sky bars. Take a lift up to the 63rd floor for a panoramic view across the city. Then back to the right bank for the final time. The Peninsular Hotel was considered among the top ten hotels in the world soon after opening. Though not ranked quite so highly these days, it is still very special and one of several nearby hotels which runs a courtesy boat for the convenience of its guests. As previously mentioned, this commentary finishes beneath Taksin Bridge at Saturn Pier, just a short walk from Sapin Taksin BTS Station. Cross the pedestrian canal bridge before turning right towards the escalator. Wat Yanawa the Boat Temple, a few meters downstream from the pier, can be visited by heading away from the river to the main road and turning right. <laughs>